All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Virtual elbow bump to start here. This is day, I think, 10,000 of social distancing. I'm not sure. I'm losing all track of time here. It is day one of growing my quarantine beard. We'll see how long this lasts, how long it gets, how gray it is. We'll see. It'll be quite an experiment. Um, all right. So uh, I do want to start with um, some of your notes here that you we would have been taking in class to try and keep kind of uh, some sense of normalcy here. So we're going to take a look at the cardiovascular system here and some of the basics of the cardiovascular system. First of all, one thing you should know, and I'm sure you do, is that it is a closed system of the heart and blood vessels. So does that mean by a closed system? That means that the blood never leaves the heart or the blood vessels. Unlike some insects like grasshoppers, for example, they have an open circulatory system. They have a blood vessel that runs along the dorsal side. Blood is pumped from the abdomen towards the head. It leaves the vessel, bathes all the tissues on its way down to the ventral uh, side of the body, and then recirculates through the abdomen back to that blood vessel. So it doesn't stay in blood vessels the whole time. So your heart is responsible for pumping blood, and those blood vessels allow your blood to circulate to all parts of the body. All right. Uh, the function of the cardiovascular system is to deliver oxygen and nutrients and to remove carbon dioxide and other waste products. And so that should be pretty basic uh, stuff for you right there. Um, I'm sure that you knew that already, um, but just want to kind of throw it out there. Main job, deliver oxygen and nutrients, remove carbon dioxide and other waste. So what we can see here, this is the closed system that is your circulatory system. The right side of the heart here pumps blood uh, that has picked up waste and carbon dioxide and dropped off ox its oxygen to the lungs to pick up more oxygen and then back to the left side of the heart over here. That is referred to as the pulmonary circuit. The left side of the heart takes that blood that has picked up oxygen from the lungs and pumps it out to all of your body. So all of the systems of your body. That's why this is called the systemic circuit. When blood travels from the left side of your heart around all of your body systems where it drops off oxygen and nutrients, picks up waste and CO2 and comes back to the right side of your heart. So the heart itself is located in the thoracic cavity between the lungs. Um, specifically, it's in the pericardial cavity within the thoracic cavity. Uh, the bottom of the heart is a, comes to a point that that part of the heart is called the apex, and it is directed towards the left hip. Um, uh, your heart is about the size of your fist and weighs less than a pound. Uh, so what we see here in this picture, we see the top of the, of the heart right here is actually called the base, which is kind of confusing, but it just is what it is. And then the pointed bottom of the heart right here that aims towards your left hip bone, that is the apex of the heart. So you can see here in this picture where the heart is located within the pericardial cavity of the thoracic cavity. The base is located at the level of the second rib. Um, the apex is in the fifth intercostal space, so between the fifth and sixth rib. Um, your heart's about 14 centimeters long and about nine centimeters wide. Okay. There are some coverings around the heart that wrap the heart. Uh, that covering is called the pericardium, which is a double membrane. It's got two layers, and it's considered to be a serous membrane, which means that it produces a really watery fluid that mostly serves to lubricate the heart as it as it pumps uh, so that it stays moist. Um, the two layers, the, the innermost layer is called the visceral pericardium. It lies next to the heart and right on top of the heart. The outermost layer is called the parietal pericardium um, and it's a little tougher tissue. And then the space between those two layers is filled with that serous fluid um, that helps to lubricate the heart and reduce friction as it beats. Uh, and then wrapping around all of that is a sack of dense connective tissue uh, called the fibrous pericardium. So this picture here is just to show you the layers of the heart and also the layers of the pericardium. So this is the, the wall of the heart right here. This would be one of the chambers of the heart over here. Uh, and then here are the two layers of the pericardium. This is the visceral pericardium right here that is right attached to the outermost layer of the heart. 
And then this would be your parietal layer of the pericardium. So there's your double membrane. And then wrapping everything and enclosing everything is this dense connective tissue making up the fibrous pericardium. This space in here between the two layers of the pericardium is filled with that serous fluid. And while we're on this picture, I just do want to point out that the wall of the heart has three layers, an outermost layer called the epicardium um, that, is, that uh, is connective tissue, a middle layer that makes up most of the wall of the heart that is called the myocardium that is made up of cardiac muscle, and then a thin endocardium that lines the inside of the heart uh, and lines the wall of the heart chambers. So the heart wall, like I said, it's got uh, three layers, the epicardium, which is an outside layer that is a connective tissue layer that is in contact with the visceral pericardium. You have the myocardium that is the middle layer that is mostly cardiac muscle. And then you have the endocardium, which is that innermost layer of the heart wall. Uh, and here's another picture for you. Um, here's your per, uh, pericardial cavity with your parietal pericardium, then your visceral pericardium. Uh, here's your epicardium, myocardium, endocardium. Okay. Uh, and they point out here a couple of the coronary blood vessels that are responsible for delivering blood to the heart muscle cells themselves so that they have a constant supply of oxygen. If one of these gets blocked, um, uh, then you're, you could end up having a heart attack as oxygen supply is cut off to some of the muscle of the heart and those heart muscle cells die. All right, so here uh, we're taking a look at the outside of the heart because we're going to get into the heart anatomy here. Um, on the outside of the heart, uh, some of the key structures that we're going to see first, you have to identify this is the left anatomical left side of the heart as it would be sitting in the pericardial cavity. This is the anatomical right side of the heart. There are two chambers that are located at the top of the heart called the atrium or the atria. You have the right atrium and the left atrium. On the outside of the heart, we have these flap-like structures called oracles. Uh, the bottom chambers of the heart are the ventricles. We have the left ventricle and right ventricle. You can't really see them till we get a section through the, uh, through the heart, a, and ironically enough, coronal section through the heart. Um, you'll see here we have some of the uh, coronary arteries running on the outside of the heart here. Here's the right coronary artery over here. Uh, here's the left coronary artery coming down the front of the heart here. And then you should be able to identify some of the major blood vessels that are attached to the heart. Um, here we have the superior and inferior vena cava that are bringing blood back to the right side of the heart, back to the right atrium from the body. This would be what we call deoxygenated blood. It, uh, it is low in oxygen, higher in carbon dioxide. Um, we have this major blood vessel right here that is the aorta that is bringing oxygenated blood from the left ventricle and that is going to get pumped out to all parts of the body. Um, we have some blood vessels, some arteries, major arteries that branch off of the aorta like the brachiocephalic artery that goes up to the uh, head and, uh, and to the arm on the right side of the body. You have the left common carotid artery that goes up to the head uh, on the left side of the body and then the left subclavian artery goes out to the arm on the left side of the body. Here we have the pulmonary trunk that branches into the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary trunk comes out from the right ventricle uh, and branches into uh, right and left. Here's the left. This would be the right pulmonary arteries. Uh, these are going to bring deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Um, these are the only arteries in the body that are actually carrying deoxygenated blood, which of course is a type of uh, little question that teachers would love to put on a quiz or a test. What's the only arteries that carry deoxygenated blood, blood that's low in oxygen? That would be the pulmonary arteries that are bringing blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Arteries always carry blood away from the heart, arteries away. Um, and then the other uh, blood vessels you can see here are the pulmonary veins. These are the left pulmonary veins. These are the right pulmonary veins. These are bringing blood back to the, uh, back to the heart, uh, back to the left atrium of the heart from the lungs. So these are veins that are carrying oxygenated blood. These are the only veins in the body that carry oxygenated blood. So again, that's another really good, easy test question for a teacher to write, which are the only veins in the body that carry oxygenated blood. Uh, veins bring blood back to the heart. 
Um, the way I always remembered that when I was learning was um, I kind of went to my Spanish because I took Spanish um, in high school uh, and I knew that veneer was to come. So veins, veneer, they're bringing back, they're bringing blood back to the heart. Blood is coming back to the heart. That's just a little trick that I use to help remember that veins bring blood to the heart. Uh, so those are the major structures of the external part of the heart that you should know. Uh, so if we look inside the heart, there are four chambers inside of the heart. Um, there are the atria, which are the receiving chambers at the top of the heart. So you have a right atrium and left atrium. And then there are the ventricles, which are the pumping, uh, pumping chambers or discharging chambers of the heart. You have a right ventricle and a left ventricle. And like I pointed out in one of those first slides, the right and left sides act as separate pumps. Right, so the right side pumps blood to the lungs and back. The left side pumps blood to the body and back. Um, and, and so we will get into the path that blood flows through the heart and all the structures of the heart in just another couple slides here. Um, all right, our heart has some valves inside of it, which you probably heard of before. The key thing about valves is they allow blood to flow in only one direction. There are four of them in the heart. There are what are called the atrioventricular valves or AV valves that are between the atria and ventricles, which makes sense. On the left side of the heart, we have what's called the bicuspid valve, or it's also called the mitral valve. And on the right side of the heart, we have the tricuspid valve, uh, and that's between the right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, between the ventricles and the arteries that they pump blood into, we have what are called the semilunar valves. On the right side of the heart, we have the pulmonary semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. And on the left side of the heart, we have the aortic semilunar valve between the left ventricle and the aorta. Um, so the, your valves open up as blood is pumped through, and then they are held in place by special structures called chordae tendinae. Um, and those valves will close once, they, once blood has flowed through them into the next chamber or next blood vessel, they will close to prevent the backflow of blood back into the chamber uh, that the blood just came from. Okay, so in this picture here, we can actually see here, uh, this is gonna be your tricuspid valve between the right atrium and right ventricle. This is your bicuspid or mitral valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle down here, this chamber. Um, and you can see these structures here that are holding the valves in place attached to muscle at the base of the, uh, at the base of the heart here. Um, actually, I shouldn't use that term, at the bottom of the heart here. Um, these are the chordae tendinae and they are attached to these bumps of muscle called papillary muscle. So when the ventricle here pumps blood up into the pulmonary trunk, when this contracts really hard, so it squeezes really hard, it pumps blood up and it would, that the pressure of that blood would blast these, val these valves, these valve flaps open so blood would go back into the um, atria if we didn't have the chordae tendinae holding those valve flaps in place. All right, so they help to hold the valve flaps in place so that blood can only go up into the pulmonary trunk here or up into the aorta here. Um, this section does not show you the pulmonary semilunar valve, but you can see here, this is the aortic semilunar valve between the left ventricle and the, uh, and the aorta. Okay, so uh, here's another view. Um, this is a looking down at the heart. Um, we've cut the top off of the heart so we can see the tricuspid valve has three flaps, hence tricuspid. This is the bicuspid valve that has two flaps, hence bicuspid. Here's your, your aortic semilunar valve. This would be the aorta uh, coming up out of the left ventricle. And this is your pulmonary valve here. Uh, and this is the pulmonary trunk coming up from the right ventricle. Um, the term mitral valve is related to the mitre, which is the hat that um, that's, uh, priests would wear, um, popes, bishops would wear. And you can see it's got those two flaps right there, just like this has two flaps coming down. So it kind of looks like a, a mitre. So just a little bit of trivia for you. All right, so um, this slide you can go back and check on your own, just talks a little bit about the tricuspid, all the different valves, where they're located, what their function is. Okay. Um, 
this slide again talks about the function of the valves, which is basically um, as blood flows into a chamber, as it continues to enter, it will start to slowly force those valves open and blood will start to move down into the next chamber. And then the atria would contract and shove, push all that blood down into um, the ventricle that is inferior to it, whether that's the right atria into right atrium into the right ventricle or left atrium into the left ventricle. And as the blood is pumped um, by the ventricle up into the blood vessel, uh, these valves here are going to stay closed to prevent the backflow of blood. Okay. Um, one thing that the, is kind of interesting about the heart is it actually has its own skeleton called the cardiac skeleton. Um, which is basically around the base of each of our uh, the blood vessels here, the pulmonary, um, the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, as well as around the um, around each of the valves, we're going to see that there is this dense connective tissue encircling the bases of those blood vessels and encircling the valves that provide structure and support for the heart, and it also helps to isolate the aorta from the ventricles, or the atria, I'm sorry, the atria from the ventricles. Okay. Um, sometimes our valves don't quite function properly. We can have what's called an incompetent valve that allows for blood to flow back into the previous chamber, um, which means that your heart just has to work much harder to repump blood that it's already pumped once. Um, and we can also have valves that stiffen or thicken, in that is called stenosis when a valve stiffens or gets thicker. Um, and again, that's going to make the heart have to work harder to pump blood through those blood vessels. So if these types of things happen and they become a major problem for the heart functioning properly, those valves can be replaced. Um, a lot of times they're re replaced with what are called porcine valves, which are actually valves that came from pig hearts. Interesting. Um, all right, we do have some blood vessels, and I mentioned them already, that you need to know uh, that are associated with the heart. They're called the great vessels because they're so big compared to most other blood vessels, the aorta that leaves the left ventricle, the pulmonary arteries that leave the right ventricle, and actually it's the pulmonary trunk that leaves the right ventricle and branches into the pulmonary arteries. And then we have the vena cava. The uh, vena cava are the uh, blood vessels bringing blood back to the heart from above the uh, above the heart and below the heart. So we have an inferior, a superior vena cava coming back from above uh, the heart and an inferior vena cava bringing blood back from below the heart. But the blood from the vena cava enters the right atrium. Uh, and then we have four pulmonary veins, two coming from the left side, two coming from the right side that enter the left atrium. So here's what I wanna do on this slide here is just trace the path of blood through the heart starting with the vena cava here. So this is your superior vena cava. This is your inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava is above the heart, inferior is below, and the inferior vena cava is bringing blood back to the heart from anywhere below the level of the heart in the body. Superior vena cava bringing blood back from anywhere above the level of the heart in the body, and they are bringing deoxygenated blood um, from the the head and neck and arms and from the ab abdomen um, and legs back to the right atrium. So blood enters the right atrium from the vena cava. Uh, from the right atrium, that blood will pass through the tricuspid valve into the left ventricle, uh, which will contract to pump blood into the pulmonary trunk that branches into the left and right pulmonary arteries. From there, this deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs it will pick up oxygen and it will then come back to the heart through the left and right pulmonary veins, now oxygenated, and enter the left atrium, which will contract and pump blood through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle, which will then contract and pump blood through the aortic valve into the aorta, out to the body to drop off oxygen and nutrients, and then back to the heart to go uh, through either the inferior or superior vena cava to come back to the right atrium, back through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle, back up through the pulmonic valve to the pulmonary trunk all over again and just keeps going around and around and around just like that. And that is the end. Stay safe, stay healthy. 
Uh, I will see you guys soon, I hope.